So I'll be talking about our recent work on uh, contextual bandits with knapsacks. This is joint work with Nikhil Devanur and Lee Hong Lee, both from uh, Microsoft Research. So let me first define the contextual bandits problem as we consider it. <coughs> so in this problem, as in usual bandits problem, every time an algorithm has to pick between k arms. In the problem, in the example I will be considering, these are maybe you cannot see it at the back, but these are. Uh, hotel advertisements in New York City, and you have to pick one of the ads to show to the user. One of the differences, uh, and, and if you show the ad, the user may or may not click on it, and that's your reward. So one of the main aspects of contextual bandits is that the reward that you get by pulling an arm, or whether you get a click or not, actually depends on the context in which you pull the arm. An example of the context is the search query that the user type for searching. Uh, so if you type New York hotels, so ad relevant to that will, his has more chances to be clicked. And it also may depend on the user profile, the user who is typing the query and his, his or her preferences. The, the uh, model of contextual bandits that we are considering is very general in the sense that the, there is no direct uh, explicit uh, mention of what is the relation between context and rewards. All we know is that there is some underlying unknown joint distribution from which at every time step context and rewards are being generated. This distribution is not known to the algorithm. So the implicitly the, the relation between context and reward is modeled through some any correlation that might exist in this joint distribution. So the way the problem proceeds is like at, at every step the algorithm sees a context vector, the user and the query, and it has to select one of these arms, and after the arm is selected, it can see the reward for that arm. Now, <clears throat> the overall, the goal of the algorithm is to maximize the total reward that he gets by pulling these arms. So effectively, the algorithm is trying to learn, if I see a certain context, what arm should I pull? So it's trying to learn a policy mapping the context to the rewards. And to make the problem more interesting and more structured, it's, uh, we also consider that the algorithm is pulling, uh, is, is residing between policies from a limited policy space. So let's say I'm only interested, I believe that linear policies are good enough for my problem, and I only want to find the best linear policy. Or let's say I want to only consider decision trees of certain size. So that makes problem more tractable and interesting. And now one big implementation issue is that these policies are effectively mappings between context vectors and rewards. Uh, and arms, so they are going to be very large size space. Uh, they are going to be exponential, at least in the dimension of the context. So how do you even how do you even specify the access to this policy space? So for that, uh, it will be assumed that there is an argmax oracle. Effectively, that says that you have a training algorithm on this policy space. So if you had an empirical distribution over a context and rewards, then for that empirical distribution, you can find the best policy. Okay, so given historical data, for example, the algorithm is able to compute the best policy fitting that data. So that is the whole, whole problem structure. The algorithm goal, algorithm's goal is to learn what policies to use so that the total uh, reward is maximized. So we consider a generalization of this setup in which we also consider, in addition to uh, generating a reward on pulling an arm, there is also a consumption of certain resources on pulling an arm. So every time you pull an arm, like show an ad, it's not just that you see a reward, you see some consumption of resources. For example, it could be consumption of advertiser's budget. Now, the stochastic assumption is that not just the context and the reward, but also the consumption is generated from this unknown underlying distribution, and there could be arbitrary correlations between context rewards and consumptions. So the algorithm's problem now is to figure out again a policy to map uh, bit, uh, between context and arms so that it can maximize the total reward while, assume, while ensuring that none of the consumptions exceed the given budgets. So that's the knapsack constraint that you need to ensure that total consumption in the end lies within certain budgets specified to you. So the algorithm has to halt ex as soon as any of the budget exceeds. So this, this, uh, this, this imposes additional constraint. There's already a constraint on number of pulls, which is there in multi-arm bandits, but there's also a constraint on the total consumption of budgets. 
So one, uh, one uh, insight into how this makes problem co uh, complicated is now you might realize, uh, uh, one observation is that earlier when we did not have constraints, you can show that if you have a given policy space, even though the algorithm can choose different policies at different time steps, there is always a single best policy which if you use all the time that is optimal thing to do. But with the cons resource constraints that is no longer true. Here is a simple example which shows that suppose you had only two policies, both of them give reward one, but one of them consumes more, more of resource one, other, other consumes more of, more of resource two then actually mixture of two policies is strictly better than any individual policy. So you should half the time use one policy and half the time use another policy. So that is one example of complications introduced by such resource constraints. Just to describe our contributions, let me uh, briefly say what is the state of the art in these problems. So contextual bandits problem without any constraints, uh, the state of the art is represented by these papers here, uh, many of the contributors are present. So this is not me, this is Alek Agarwal. Uh, the, the, the paper by Alek Agarwal and co-authors basically gives the best available regret bound for contextual bandit problem as I described it. They achieve a k square root kt log pi regret and also something that is important in our work, they also achieve this by an efficient algorithm. So what I mean by efficient is that the number of oracle calls they have to make is only logarithmic in the policy space. So that is important because as I said the policy space it could typically be very large. In bandits with knapsacks that is uh, with knapsack constraints but, constraints but without context, the uh, a work by Badani Diru, Kleinberg and Slifkins and another work by uh, me and a co-author uh, Nikhil Devanur uh, have achieved near optimal regret bounds. Uh, the closest uh, paper to our work is this one here which combines these two and essentially achieves near optimal regret bounds for contextual bandits with knapsacks. The main drawback of this work is that it is essentially an information theoretic result, it achieves the regret bound, but the algorithm has very large running time and it also needs to know the marginal distribution of the context vectors. So essentially our work closes this problem by, show, by achieving the close to what can be achieved without constraints and also uh, making the number of calls to be logarithmic in the policy space. So let me just mention briefly the main features of the algorithm. So it, it heavily builds on the algorithm by Agarwal et al for contextual bandits without constraints. The main feature of, uh, of their algorithm is that they maintain a distribution over the policy space and they ensure that every time the distribution is such that it satisfies two properties it has a high reward that is low regret and it has sufficient exploration over policies that have potential to be good policies. Now we have to do the same thing except that we do not have a single number as a reward anymore because we have to also worry about consumption. So the main idea is to actually come up with a pseudo reward which is a combination of reward and constraint violation. And, and this quantity z used to combine them is the main quantity and forms the main challenge of the approach because this z needs to be estimated carefully, it is essentially the Lagrange multiplier of the problem, how important constraints are with respect to the objective. And to estimate this we have to use a few, use few, few exploration, pure exploration rounds. Uh, luckily we can show that we do not need a very good estimation of this multiplier, a constant factor approx approximation is sufficient and that is why we can achieve the near optimal guarantees. So just to mention a very few future directions, so in our paper we already extend this to not just sum of rewards but a concave function of the sum of rewards, uh, but it is still open to have concave function of sum of rewards as well as con convex constraints and there the main difficulty is actually in estimating z, this multiplier. Thank you. <laughs>